um, well, I mean, quantum mechanics, the stuff that I just, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know what the symbols meant. I really didn't know what the symbols meant, what they really represented. Mm. I could recognize them and give them a name, but I didn't really know what they stood for. You know, the wave function and, you know, Hamiltonian and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a musical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, so that's probably the three things then, um, working back with space repetition, then the ability to commit when you're memorizing something to some deep association, and then the blank sheet to give you the, the fundamental, the kind of the, the vector space yeah. with which you can play, the playground with which you can sort of like learn. Amazing. Yep. The letter A. Letter Analogies. A. Analogies. Yeah. And obviously I try to double up the alliteration. So you've got assimilate the analogies because it's not just about understanding analogies. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about creating your own analogies, which is you know, quite a lot of work, but it's just being able to assimilate and by assimilate, take in and deeply understand the ways of understanding what these things mean in a relation to something that you already understand. So analogy is brilliant because what it does is say it relates something you know very, very well to something which is new and uncertain. You know, one of the ones we talk about all the time is you can't see, you can't see really electricity moving. You, know, obviously you can't really see it, but you can yep. see the effect of it. And so well, what's that a bit like? Well, you can't see air, but you can see the effect of air moving because when, the wind, you know, when, the, when the wind is blowing. So, so this idea that kind of maybe a current of electrons is kind of like the wind, but inside a wire. And you can sort of, you know, use an analogy for that. And like people use water analogies and they use all sorts of gravity based analogies mm. for, for things like that. And I think not so much, as I said, not so much creating your own analogies, but assimilating the analogies well enough so you can then talk about it. Okay. And I think that's the key thing. So at the end of the U period, you know, the U phase, you, you need to be able to map stuff out. At the end of the F phase, you need to be able to recall these basic fundamentals, sure. the, the vocabulary, if you like, of the domain. And then the A is all about, you've got to be able to talk about this and assimilating the analogies well enough so you can then talk about this to other. Now, not explain how to do it yet, because we're still not quite at that stage, yeah. but just kind of what's it all about. So what is uh, complex analysis all about? You know, if you really understand it, well, I mean, I don't know, I mean, what, it, what it's all about. So <laughs> you might want to choose a different topic. But, you know, being able to say it's a bit like, and yeah. be able to say, I mean, we use the, you know, the sixth mnemonic for this, don't you? Where you, we're talking, um, the S stands for simple language. Yeah. I stands for, it's a bit like, yeah. and the X is a fudge. So, so that's, that stands for, um, <laughs> Example. for examples. But I think getting people used to making it as simple as possible and saying, well, it's a bit like this. Mm. It's not everything like this. Don't get hung up on the fact that all analogies, well, the, the fact that they fall apart at some point is because they aren't the actual thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're not the thing, so, you know. They're not meant to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah.